Hello, I'm appropriate greetings to the virtual room and thanks for coming to attend my talk. Today, we're gonna to talk about the uh, state of software development tools for RISC V architecture. I'm sure you have attended to talks on RISC V uh, in this conference so far and this morning's Kirstis uh, keynote. Um, and uh, in this uh, talk, we're gonna cover uh, primarily Linux oriented tools, but you know, I'll also cover operating systems and try to go and cover some of the R tosses and things like that. So this is the agenda. Uh, essentially we'll talk about tool chains, uh, its components, and then some system tools, um, emulators, simulators, some new language runtimes and the operating systems. Um, and what's the progress in there, what's new, and um, what's um, happening right now. If you have questions, uh, feel free to ask uh, uh, them towards, I'll keep some time towards the end of the talk so we can discuss those questions. All right. So uh, emulators, um, Kimu has upstream support for RISC-5 and it can emulate RISC-5 on a x86 system and vice versa too. So we can have a uh, x86 system emulated on a RISC-5 machine. Uh, QMU 5.0 has added hypervisor extension support um, and the Linux Syscon drivers and the RTC uh, support as well. So, um, and uh, there is another emulator, it's called uh, TinyMU. Uh, and if you're interested, you can just go in there and try out a uh, few things if you want to play uh, with a pre-existing image and without any setups. Um, this is really handy and uh, it runs a build root based port of a 32-bit as well as 64-bit um, tool chains. And um, it also emulates the RV128-bit uh, ISA. Um, Spike is the oldest uh, uh, available simulator. Uh, it is also um, available and um, you can try it out and there are uh, several operating systems that deploy spike as well for emulation purposes renode is essentially for a uh, virtual development tool for uh, for simulating the hardware and um, and i pointed out uh, some of the documents here where you can get a lot of details what's going on there what different uh, devices are being emulated in renode and how you would be able to use it for your own purposes as well. Um, with emulators, uh, I would also like to talk about Linux kernel. There has been a lot happening in Linux kernel since uh, 4.15. That's when the 64-bit um, RISC 5 support landed in there with stable API. And uh, the recent versions of kernel, um, we have seen there is a, a, a Kenwright K210 support that has been uh, going in into 5.8. It started with 5.7. Uh, there is a uh, KGDB support in, in progress and uh, KVM support is also a work in progress and it has been submitted upstream for review. And uh, the KExec, KDump, and KProbes, KRET probes uh, is also work on, under progress. And um, uh, similarly, the UFI support for RIS5 has been also under review. Um, and vectorize the support um, as well. So as you can see, there is a lot of uh, work that has been in flight right now and landing in various versions of kernel. Um, and Clang built um, kernel is also in progress and uh, it is booting on KMU. So you'll see a few patches uh, in the mailing lists that are um, uh, specifically supporting Clang build support. Um, so a lot of um, uh, activity there on the kernel side as well. And um, uh, on the bootloader side, I think core boot, U boot, they already have upstream support, the BBL, the Berkeley bootloader, that was the one of the initial bootloaders when uh, the others didn't exist. Uh, but e recently OpenSBI has gotten a lot of uh, attention and you know the new um, spec has been implemented as well. And um, most of like QME is also supporting OpenSBI and I think it's one of the primary 
uh, ways to boot. Um, even in open embedded, we switched to using this to, uh, as a primary payload uh, carrier. Um, so moving over to tool chains, um, GCC 10 was released a few months ago. And um, upstream support for GCC has been there for a few years now for RISC 5. But in GCC 10, we find uh, there is uh, support for this new assembly instructions. Uh, they have a dependency on newer binary rules. Uh, and Bitmanip extension, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, they are also supported in GCC 10. And uh, bit manipulation instructions, these are extensions that are uh, basically going to implement common bit operations uh, that are specific to encryption or uh, security related algorithms, and they are very useful in those. And um, uh, they are they can be emitted into code as well as uh, they are available as intrinsics if uh, uh, you'd like to use. I don't think that all of them are still implemented. There is a subsection that has been implemented, but I think more and more will be implemented as you can see. But uh, basically the base infra is already in there. So that's a, that's a great progress um, for Bitmanip. Um, LLVM and Clang. So um, RISC-5 was uh, added in LLVM 9 as a experimental architecture. Um, and since then it has received quite a, quite a bit of uh, uh, development in, in Clang 10 release time frame. Clang 10 was released uh, again a few months back. And as you can see, um, it has added the LTO support for RISC-5. Um, so basic LTO support is in there. You will be able to build on top of that a lot of other uh, support that you that will kind of use LTO effectively. And uh, compiler RT, which is the runtime, now supports both RV and the RISC-5 32-bit as well as 64-bit. And uh, the sanitizers are available for 64-bit uh, um, RIS-5 as well. So I'm hoping that there will be a 32-bit version available um, soon as well. Um, and um, Bitmanip instructions are also available on, on, uh, on Clang as well, as you can see. Um, Binutils, uh, again, support has been there for a few years. Um, what you will see in recent versions is they have added support for the privilege spec, uh, version 1.9.1. And uh, Assembler uh, has now capability to set the uh, instruction set versions uh, through command line. So you could use uh, MISA spec to specify uh, which spec you would like to uh, adhere to in the Assembler. Uh, a GDB uh, now supports the GDB server for RISC-5 uh, for Linux, which means now you can remotely debug your applications on uh, RISC-5 targets. And um, it has added the support for the native target for Linux as well um, since 8.3. Uh, but um, the GDB server is, is relatively new in GDB 9. Um, the, of course, the bare metal embedded support has been in GDB for quite some time now uh, that is already there. But um, this is a, uh, a good point now that we can do the application development and debugging uh, using GDB. Um, uh, JTAG debuggers, there is ROT support for uh, OpenOCD. Um, and it does support 64-bit multi-core. Uh, and then, of course, there are some of the uh, closed source or commercial tools uh, that are available in JTEC field. Uh, Segair Embedded um, Studio, which basically has uh, the 30 bit, 32 bit support for microcontrollers, uh, Lauterbach, and I think there are a few more, and Micro and others that are available as well if you are uh, using you know, uh, proprietary or commercial solutions. Um, System C libraries have seen uh, uh, quite a few developments um, in, in, the, in the past few months. And Muscle, which is uh, kind of an embedded C library, um, relatively new in the space, has added actually a 64-bit RISC-V support uh, since 1.1.23 release. Uh, that was early this year. 
and um, 32 bit port is not available yet um, uh, but uh, what we can see is that 64 uh, bit supports little endian it can support um, hard uh, float abi soft abi as well as um, single and soft double floating abis and uh, uh, it doesn't um, yet have uh, a big endian support or others but i guess so far little endian is uh, what is more important 32-bit uh, support for glibc has been submitted and it has been under review for quite some time now uh, it might show up in in 2.32 release uh, there is a discussion around whether it should be added in there there are some dependencies on 64-bit time t um, being uh, implemented fully in glibc on that because i think this will be one of the architectures that will support 64-bit uh, time t on 32-bit architectures out of box or uh, as at the initial port it will not have the um, the legacy implementations uh, and 64-bit RIS 5 requires uh, a minimal kernel version for the linux libc headers to be 5.0 um, the reason there is that uh, there are certain um, uh, syscalls that uh, stops that needs it so it was discovered and therefore this has been added in the uh, glibc documentation as well uh, newlib which is uh, the embedded uh, c library um, used primarily in um, bare metal kind of like standalone applications uh, there has been syscall implements in there um, and uh, there's a libm support that is now available for risc 5 uh, called new lib nano and um, a new size optimized uh, memory functions has been uh, added for risc 5 as well uh, so if you're um, using new lib in embedded targets uh, th these are uh, great improvements to system c library uh, new lib that is um, now moving on to the language runtimes um, Go has been added. Um, so as you can see, this uh, slide is a little uh, probably not up to date. So, but if you have downloaded the PDF, um, there I have updated it. So Go 1.14 has uh, added uh, RIS-5 64-bit as uh, uh, experimental architecture uh, in 1.14 release. And uh, this support existed out of tree for some time, uh, but then 1.14 has accepted um the uh, the port base port um, uh, the cgo the cgo support is not yet uh, uh, accepted it is still out of free but uh, the implementation is available and um, these uh, this is required for some of the uh, container d uh, implementations for some plugins uh, like sqlite and then butterfs and uh, pi build mode is also added, um, which is uh, actually not yet upstream, but um, I'm hoping that it will be soon accepted for uh, maybe 1.15 release. So that's a uh, great news for the Go community and the RISC-5 uh, community as well. Uh, we have added uh, the Go support in Open Embedded when it was uh, out of free as well. Uh, that is, which was based on 1.13. It was available in uh, the RISC 5 layer um, because the main Go compiler back then didn't work. Uh, but with 1.14, perhaps we will not need those um, out of kind of like the RISC 5 implementation that we have in there. So um, there is a bootstrap that is done. Um, and I've pointed this link here. If you are interested in bootstrapping, bootstrapping Go compiler, uh, then you, know, you could go and you can work on the compiler itself. But if you're doing applications, uh, the major distributions will have it um, available for you. So uh, that's uh, really great progress. And um, uh, moving on to Rust. Uh, Rust actually has been um, there for the embedded um, side of things for quite some time now. And um, for bare metal so it, uh, for 1.36 release onwards um, it was available um, and some of these uh, packages like um, low level access for risc 5 um, 
the these were also available uh, in in recent versions. Um, however, uh, recently, um, RISC V has been also added as a target to uh, Rust, and it's uh, a tier two target. Uh, so I think Rust can, Rust has like tier one targets and tier two and tier three. And um, initially, it was added as a tier three target because it wasn't um, documenting all, how the tests are run, the Rust tests are run, test suites. And then um, um, it, uh, it, it basically, the uh, engineers from CodeThink contributed a lot in this area where they got the tests working as well. So, and also um, uh, promote um, RISC V as a um, tier two architecture. Um, but I think it is only for cross compilation as of now. I think there is uh, work ongoing to make it um, um, uh, for the host as well. So um, I think next time when we talk, perhaps we'll have um, RISC V as a tier one architecture uh, for Rust community. So I think this is also a great news for um, uh, RISC V community because um, there are several packages in. Uh, in various distributions that depend on Rust. And um, this will just make it better for uh, that. We'll see that some of those packages, which are probably missing in distribution because of these runtimes, are now available. Um, the Wasm time uh, is actually a WebAssembly implementation. I found it very interesting. They, they are supporting. RIS 5 as well. Um, and uh, uh, so uh, I don't have much details on you know, what the details are in there. But um, if you are interested in WebAssembly, I think uh, Crane Lift and Wasm Time, they are good projects to look into. So um, so um, be before I kind of jump into the uh, Operating systems. I also wanted to mention about um, uh, Java, OpenJDK. You know, they do support the zero VM backend, but uh, um, the you know um, hotspot perhaps is still missing in there. Uh, so you can, in theory, get like uh, you know Java applications um, working on RISC V. They may not be as optimized as, as other architectures because of the the JVM that is underneath is just an interpreter. Um, and OCaml also has a uh, out of tree support um, that is available. And uh, um, perhaps, you know, in future, we'll see it also submitted upstream and it will be one of the supported architectures for uh, OCaml as well. So I know that um, um, Fedora uh, and um, other distributions, they do have for camel implementations. Uh, Linux operating systems. Uh, Debian uh, is uh, uh, supporting the Freedom U540 as well as a QME target. And uh, there is a nice um, wiki page if you are a Debian developer or user and want to participate in RISC V community, um, please go read through this uh, to get acquainted with it. And uh, what I always follow is uh, this graph here. And uh, as you can see, the gray line is what the RISC V port is. It started somewhere on 2018, and uh, you can see like. Um, you know how steep it was, and and then of course now it is uh, somewhere above ninety percent, I believe, or touching ninety percent in many cases. So as these new language runtimes they get implemented, all these tools are helping more and more packages in in Debian ecosystem um, get compiled and be available for uh, RISC V architectures. Um, so that's great, um, and I'm hoping that one day it will be. Uh, you know, nearly 100% or some of those uh, green lines you see on the top. Uh, Fedora. Um, so in Fedora, RIS-5 is uh, uh, called as a alternative architecture. 
And uh, there are like minimal developer and GNOME images that are now available. And it supports GMU as well as the, uh, the Sci-Fi Unleashed target that uh, is available. And um, um, I think it can also have like expansion boards for PCI graphics and, and some like SATA storage. And you can have like a, a, a full experience of a desktop uh, as well on on the uh, uh, freedom board so that's actually um, really good i know that several of us they use uh, fedora on natively on 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 this board uh, open also has the implementation and um, tumbleweed which is the bleeding edge uh, the rolling release for open um has a risk five port and um, uh, and also, it has a, uh, a, a system D and spawn um, available. And if you want to look at uh, packages, um, the ports, packages, what all are available, um, I've provided the link here. Um, Gen2, I'm not sure I couldn't find much information, but uh, I think uh, you know there is a landing page in there for Gen2 as well. And um, um, so on the embedded side, um, I'll cover open embedded uh, as well as some other like you know build root. So in open embedded, uh, we have uh, both 32-bit RIS-5 as well as 64-bit RIS-5 support, and uh, they are available in the 3.1 release. Um, the 32-bit, oh, sorry, 64-bit QMU support is in open embedded core, which is the you know now it's upstream in open embedded. Um, and Linux Yocto, which is the um, kernel that Linux, that Yocto project uses, um, supports RIS-564 as well. Um, essentially, that is basically an upstream implementation, but adds uh, the configurations and uh, other patches that Open Embedded and Yocto project needs for testing and other purposes. So that's great because um, it provides uh, a mainstream experience for testing the architecture and uh, using this kernel to run through all the existing test infrastructure that we have. Um, and it supports both Muscle and glibc for 64-bit um, as of now. And um, it also supports multiple ABIs. So uh, I know that the desktop distributions primarily stick to, uh, you know, a, a more common ABI, but in an embedded space, you might want to choose a, a no float API, for example, RV64i. And uh, there is a no float API for RISP32 as well as 64 um, bit. And then, of course, you have the ABIs for uh, the, the general ABIs, the GC one, versions. Um, the, there is an architecture layer called MetaRIS5 that's hosted on, on the RISC 5 handle. It supports um, bare metal SDKs, so you could build uh, tool chains and SDKs that you could use to do um, bare metal or standalone application development. So you can generate SDKs for both 32-bit and 64-bit. Um, they could be either using new lib or could be purely bare metal, uh, depending upon your use case. Um, and it also has support for the uh, U540 board. Uh, so all the uh, board support package is there, and uh, the 32-bit QMU machine is also part of uh, MetaRIS 5. Eventually, if it gets accepted into glibc uh, 232, we might promote it into um, Open Embedded Core, and thus, you know, it will be migrated from here. But until then, it is in there. Um, it has been supporting the um, cross-building Go packages. And as I mentioned earlier in the Go slide where uh, we were able to build Go 1.13 um, when it was out of free, uh, there is work in progress to get that into 1.14 and perhaps we'll be able to get all the cross-build infrastructure for Go that is in open embedded um, onto this year as well in coming few months. Um, yeah, and this also has um, a Clang support as a system compiler for both 32-bit as well as 64-bit RIS-5. Um, and 64-bit RIS-5 can run the uh, uh, 
the p-tests which is the yocto's uh, automatic test framework uh, and uh, there has been some work in there that has been pending in the past but um, thankfully there were a few issues we had in in qmu and they have been addressed so today you could run the uh, tests on qmu uh, we haven't yet Build root, um, build root. Uh, all the support is upstream, um, um, and it fully supports both 32-bit and 64-bit architectures, like Open Embedded. And um, currently, it's supporting kernel 5.4, and it's uh, regularly tested. Um, and you can see that the auto builder. Um, I've kind of pointed here um, their builds for RIS-5 64-bit um, as well as 32-bit. And uh, much like Open Embedded, it supports both Muscle and glibc. And of course, Muscle 32-bit port is not existing there yet. So therefore, there is no 32-bit support for Muscle. But glibc, they should probably have both. Um, and similar to Kimi targets, there is a RISC-5 64 and RISC-32 were um, available. Um, OpenWRT, um, you can see that OpenWRT added support and um, it was added um, for hi Five Unleashed. And uh, there was a Vertex 7 based implementation, FPGA based implementation and also could run on QMU. And it does support both Muscle and glibc. Um, I am not sure whether it has been upstreamed yet, but it is uh, the port is still available um, in the link that I pointed here. And FreeBSD, actually one of the oldest uh, supported operating system for um, RISC five. Um, it similarly supports uh, Hi5 Unleashed as well as uh, QMU, but in addition, there is a Spike uh, implementation also available, so you could use Spike as a emulator as well. Um, and I think there is a healthy community and they're on IRC as well for. And NetBSD has added uh, uh, support for this in the 10.0 release, which is uh, a, a nice uh, addition to the BSD family of the operating systems. Um, and I'm hoping that soon we'll get like OpenBSD and others adopting RISC-5 as well. Um, Pre-Arthos, um, there was an announcement from AWS on supporting RISC-5 as one of the primary architectures. And uh, they have several embedded boards that are, are running RISC-5 as supported. And I've listed here, there are demos available for the My5 M2 GL025, and there is a uh, RV32 M1 Vega board uh, demo, and they're called the RISCI, the RI5 and the RISCI core. And uh, there's a Kimi implementation for uh, the Sci5 E model as well that is available. So it's well supported in free RTOS um, when we consider the embedded side of the RTOSes. Um, Zephyr, uh, Zephyr has added the support for 1.13.0. Um, that was a few years ago, and um, it has uh, supported Hi5.1 board uh, ever since 1.13.0. And there has been more boards that has been added, uh, the soft SCs, the VEX RISC -V CPU, and it's offered actually as part of the standard Zephyr SDK, if you go download it you can find um, several RISC 5 boards that are now supported out of box. Uh, they've also added the hard float support recently and uh, also exposed the compiler tunes um, through the um, Zephyr build system, which means you could easily port it to you know, a, a more variant of devices which might not be supporting the uh, standard ABIs or you, know, you have different ABIs that you would like to use, it's now easy to use there. Um, Artems, 
Artems um, has the upstream support for simulators. Um, and uh, RISC-5 Clang and LLVM support is also available in the build system for uh, RISC-5 in Artems. And it has added a GDB support uh, and toolchain support for 64 and actually the target support for both 32-bit and 64-bit is actually unified um, in, in one. So uh, there is a new board that they have also added called ES310RT. So there is a BSP added for that as well. And um, so interesting uh, developments in that area as well from, from uh, our times. Um, there are a few uh, educational or academic um, artosis like XV6 from MIT that does support RIS-5 as well. And, um, uh, and Helen OS, which is a microkernel approach um, also implements 3.5 ISA as well. Um, so that's pretty interesting as well. Um, all right, so uh, help needed, so V8, um, there's no port for V8 as of yet. Um, as a result, there is no Node.js as well uh, that is available. So I guess uh, those are targets that will need uh, some um, help in the community. and. Um, uh, Java, of course, you know there there, there has to be uh, some jitted Java JVM available, uh, and this, that's not yet available. And uh, similarly, new like Dart, and these are like upcoming um, ecosystems that we will require to do. Um, and th th there is, I think, uh, uh, some help needed in there. Uh, I have also uh, seen that uh, the gradual growth in the contributions for, for example, Linux kernel, uh, but uh, it has been um, steadily growing, but we will probably need um, more contributions in that area. I listed uh, several features that are being implemented in the kernel, um, but I guess you know the, the, there is a steady rise in contributions and that's a very uh, good sign uh, for the community growth as we can see. And um, uh, I'm hoping that VA community and Node.js community will also um, uh, start supporting it soon. And perhaps next time when we talk about, we'll have some activity around those um, ecosystems as well. So um, as you can see, um, the upstream first uh, strategy that risc five communities follow in general, um, the out of tree support remains there when it is under heavy development, but always effort is put in place. So they show up as um, up, upstream supported uh, targets. And that's actually uh, the mantra that um, the community has been always following. So um, most of the software as, as a result is upstream. So if you want to participate in any of those communities we talked about, you can use the project's regular communication mechanisms. There is no specific RISC-V um, um, out of three ports or, or you know, regular channels would be sufficient. Um, in some cases, um, there are um, architecture specific mailing lists, for example, for kernel. Uh, the reason being that's how the kernel is organized. So there is a RISC-V mailing list specifically for kernel. And um, but if you were to do some GCC Clang or LLVM development or Go or uh, then you would directly participate in the upstream communities. Uh, then there is specific to RISC-5. There are um, um, some mailing lists on RISC-5.org and there is a SW dev. Please subscribe to those. There are a lot of software related discussions that go in, in there. And um, there's also a patches at uh, groups.risv.org where all the patches for RISC-5 ports are sent. And uh, there is a uh, channel, RISC-5 on free node. And uh, there is general RISC-5 discussions around software, hardware, other, other areas. And uh, there is a, if you're a kernel developer, there's a Linux RISC-5 um, uh, specific Linux port specific mailing list. So please subscribe to those, participate there. 
And uh, there's a growing questions on Stack Overflow as well. So if you like to answer or learn about what has been answered, um, Stack Overflow is also a good resource to try out um, um, various other things. So uh, RISC-5 International maintains actually a very active software status. And um, if you know uh, that status is um, uh, not up to date for the project that um, you, know, you are looking at, uh, please submit pull requests and uh, it will get updated in there. It's a fairly, it's a living document and uh, it's always updated and the community um, provides that in input in there. So please submit uh, any uh, update requests or you find that it is out of, um, uh, is not up to date for whatever reasons. And, uh, and also go through that list and see uh, where different ports are. And uh, they also have uh, some of the ports that are basically uh, in there. Uh, for example, open OCD. The reason is that, you know, the work for upstreaming it has been uh, ongoing. Um, all right, so um, that was uh, all. Thank you for your time. And um, I will now uh, take a few questions here. Uh, I think we still have time here, so we'll go over questions. Please feel free to ask questions here. All right, so um, there's a question. Um, do you do any platform similar to the hardware support 64 bit kernel and 32 bit user space? Um, I, I'm not aware of uh, that is uh, done yet, um, but ILP 32 kind of, um, uh, you know, the ABI is under discussion there. So, um, but I'm not aware of whether we have uh, that set up yet. Um, there's another question is, uh, is Android ported to race five? And the answer is no. I guess it will take someone uh, to work with uh, the Android community. Um, maybe, you know, um, someone from the Silicon side and, and port it over. But I guess, um, you know, the Java support, as I mentioned earlier, perhaps there are a few kind of large blocks that needs to be solved first. Um, but I'm hoping that, you know, we'll hear some good news in future. Okay. Um, so next one is, um, what is the normal use case for 32 bit at this point? Um, so 32 bit, um, I think again, um, you know, there are microcontrollers that will use it and have been using it in some cases. Uh, and um, there is perhaps going to be a Linux port as well, because um, obviously, you know, the architecture is future looking. There is also space for not only 64 bit, but 128 bit as well. But um, I guess for practical purposes, we'll still have 32 bit in the embedded space. Um, and rightly for space and memory reductions. Um, and um, there could be other reasons. Um, maybe, you know, you have like software that is 32-bit um, or primarily, but what I think um, it, it will always exist there. Okay. Um, So is RISC-V uh, free ATOS and Zephyr supported in Yocto? Um, answer is yes, uh, in a way that um, free ATOS, actually there is a, a meta, I think there's a meta free ATOS layer already available. So uh, I'm not sure we have done specific work for uh, RISC-V in there, um, but I guess, you know, mostly what you can see is there are key ports like emulator ports that are available. So I'm sure that it it will work for um, 
for RISC V as well, but uh, there hasn't been specific PSP added, I think, for uh, PRTOS in Yocto. And uh, Zephyr, actually, the um, SDKs for Zephyr are built using Yocto project. Uh, again, Zephyr has its own own, own build system, uh, which is CMake based, and uh, but they do consume the SDKs that are built using Yocto project. So in that way, it is supported. But uh, if you want to use Yocto as a build system for uh, Zephyr, then I guess I know that will not be there. Okay, next question is, uh, can RISC-5 be implemented in Altera FPGAs? Um, yes, I guess so, because, um, you know, there are other FPGA vendors, um, you know, you, you heard about in the, in this morning's keynote as well, uh, that there is a, um, you know, Polar Fire, I believe, uh, that's coming out, right? So, uh, and I think there are other um, FPGAs toolkits that are now having RISC-5 in there, so I guess it can be, but I guess it's more of a question for uh, Altera slash Intel. Um, Okay, so the next question is, uh, which RISC-V boards are supported in Yocto project? And uh, in the core for the emulators, primarily for um, QMU, but if you use the, uh, the architecture layer, then there is support for the uh, Sci-Fi Freedom uh, U540 board. And uh, as new boards come out, we'll look for adding that support as and when available. So, but as of now, you have the Freedom Board. Um, Okay, so um, there's a question on which modes used in U-Boot and Linux for RISC-V. I'm not sure um, which modes you're talking about here, but um, if it is uh, related to ISA or otherwise, um, um, I think that's not dependent on, you know, I mean, they, they it depends upon tools more than the kernels, but I, I guess the, um, the general um, support is there for the GC uh, modes. Okay, um, there's uh, another question uh, on should Should one use tile link or AXI in a RISC-V SOC? I think um, uh, it depends upon the implementations, right? So RISC-V as such, what we are talking about here is not architecture side. Um, so perhaps that will be uh, implemented by, you know, whoever implements the RISC-V based SOC. Okay, so uh, there's uh, one more question. Um, which approach would you currently suggest to support custom instructions on the software side? Um, generally, I think uh, if um, inline assembly, if compiler supports that particular ABI and um, 
I guess adding that to you know the compiler would be the uh, would be a good approach, uh, and so you could use it as intrinsics or you could use it as inline assembly. Um, um, doing just it in assembly perhaps is is uh, in my mind a bit more uh, maintenance is required. Uh, so you know having kind of it enabled in the compiler would be the right thing to do and. Um, Given that now we have um, LLVM backend available for RISC-5, a uh, lot of other language runtimes that are uh, using that uh, as to target the compiler um, backends, you will be able to use, for example, all those bits for you know that different kind of languages. So uh, I think that's perhaps you know good to have that implementations in in the compiler. I guess no, I do have yeah so um, one of the questions uh, that was uh, uh, clarified on um, which machine mode. So basically it implements um, the supervisory mode as well. Okay, so I guess um, thanks everyone for asking good amount of questions. And um, thank you for attending this talk. I hope uh, it was useful to you. Um, and I will be hanging around here in, in the virtual sessions. So feel free to ask more questions after this talk. And uh, thank you, everyone.